What is up, YouTube? Dark God back again. Day four of the October Horror Movie Challenge, where I'm trying to get 100 horror films in the month. I'm actually trying to go for 200 this year. Uh, we'll see how that works, though. Usually, I, I get into a pace where I look like I'm going to hit everything, all my targets, and then middle of the month, I kind of burn out and then just tail away. Uh, so far, though, everything is going good. Four days in, I'm around the, uh, eh, around the 25 movie mark. So not too bad, you know, kind of on pace for the 200, which is good. Um, last night's viewing was uh, a little uh, mixed moshed. Um, my new views were decent, but there was a lot of stuff I watched that was really bad. Um, and some of it actually is like those types of movies that make you not want to do 200 movies because you watch these trash movies and you kind of just get out of it. And then you got to watch something you watched previously that you know is good to kind of cleanse your palate and, and, and move on with your horror watching so getting into the first movie i watched of the day i was talking about it yesterday uh paginini horror uh nice italian 80s slasher film kind of with like a twist of like you know who, who the the killer is and everything uh very like musically indebted in the movie like there's a lot of um scenes of singing and music like them filming music videos and everything of this band going to this house and it ties into this uh violent playing killer from the 1800s i believe it is and it's you know it's your typical 80s italian slasher flick you get the good amount of gore uh crazy scenarios crazy kills and all in all it's not a bad film you get donald pleasance in it a couple cameos uh right around right around the same time i think he was in uh halloween four and five so right around that same time though it looks like he he kind of is uh he's kind of getting beat up it looks uh a little he looks a little rough but anyway Paginini horror I go five out of ten I liked it um if you're gonna go 80s Italian horror I mean it's better to go to like demons and stuff and uh yeah, even opera came out I think the year before and that that was a lot better so but it's not bad good first time view it was probably I want to say it was probably the best first time view uh films I had yesterday uh as uh, the rest as you'll see will severely drop off um I watched a in the morning I watched a film you know with the family and everything uh House on Haunted Hill from the 50s and uh 6.5 out of 10 I've, I've rated this before uh you know i've seen this at like four or five times this is like a staple in october i think this is one of the best vincent price movies it just it encapsulates him as that like i don't know it, it, it maybe because i seen you know house on home until the remake like years later and the, the jeffrey rush character felt like it was just somebody playing vincent price so this makes it feel like this is vincent price's like go-to role even though i think there's other movies he was better in and everything um I mean, for the time, it was probably a frightening movie. Now it's kind of a little campy, but it's still a very good horror movie for what it was. And it has that whole haunted house, middle of a storm feel that just, you know, every horror movie of that generation, of that era, feels like it has. And this kind of, like, is the epitome of all that. Like, this feels like this is, like, the best version of that. Another rewatch, and this movie is one of those movies that gets worse every time I see it. And in 1990 or 92, whenever it came out, I think it was 92... I love this. I saw the movie theaters. Loved it. And that's Leprechaun. I wrote down 5 out of 10 for my score, but I think I'm even going below. Like, I'm probably going 4.5 out of 10. It just gets so bad and just so over the top and corny. And it just, there's so much that it just, you look at it and, you, and it's not even suspension of disbelief because I, I could have that, you know, I, I love obviously Friday 13 type movies. Later on, you know, there's so much suspension of disbelief. But here it just gets so comical at points and it's like, I, I think they went the right path for the films because going to the hood, going to space, that's the trajectory these films had. So you you went down that right path because this film doesn't, there's no like, nothing to the mythos of this. There's nothing that just, it's a cool character of, of like a original type character. That's about as far as it goes. So 4.5 out of 10. Another uh, rewatch has actually got me a check mark. I've seen this film before. I've seen the cover of it. I thought this film was going to be so much better than it was. And then watching it, it was just pretty much just pure trash. And not like good, like, you know, exploita exploitation trash. It was just a trash-ass film. And that is uh, Bloody New Year's um, from, I think, 87. It's an English film. And uh, it's called Bloody New Year's, but it doesn't take place on New Year's. in the middle of the summer, I believe. And it just has to do more with, like, them going to this old house. And there's all this New, uh, New Year's Eve decorations. And there was this party apparently years earlier where a bunch of bad stuff happened and it really never gets going and when it does get going it really doesn't do anything good three out of ten um there's a couple cool kills but there's one cool scene where they're like 
it's in front of a projector on a screen and the projector kind of comes alive and it's done very well like I, I will give them credit it's done better than a lot of movies of that time frame that could pull that off but it's it's not really that good of a movie three out of ten just wasn't fun to watch um another uh first time watch it was kind of bad but it it going in you know that you knew this one was going to be bad uh jaws ploitation movie basically just ripping off of jaws um the big alligator or i think it's called something like um big alligator river when it's like translated like one way and it's basically a, a resort in like i think it's in the philippines um having problems with saltwater crocodiles and uh i mean they call them alligators in the movie but i think it's just dubbed for america so you basically get like all these people going to this village um high 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 body count like i mean upper 30s i think it is and it's a uh, it's a mixture of of cheesy oversized production pieces for the alligator and then in like supplanted into that is toys in a fish tank scenes of an alligator that's supposed to be attacking a boat and it's just horribly horribly done uh sergio martino is uh i believe he's the director of it and he i mean obviously he this is his type of style you know but it just doesn't it's fun to watch i mean it's not it's fun in a bad way you know there's nothing really good about it there's nothing really cool about it no memorable kills but uh i mean it is what it is i go four out of ten it's better than bloody new year so i watched all that so i was like all right, i gotta watch something to kind of cleanse it out of those two so i watched dracula ad 1972 I believe it's the fourth Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee Dracula movie. I believe there's three before it. Um, and it, the, it, it, it's going down at this point, but I still really do like this movie. Like um, the, the side characters are a lot better in this film than Satanic Rites. And uh, they just do better. Um, I, I forget what the guy's name is that works with uh, Christopher Lee, but his character is really good. Um, doing the whole black ritual scene and everything. It comes out really cool, like how they do it and how they tie into being vampires and stuff. 6.5 out of 10. I mean, for me, with vampires, for Dracula, it's Christopher... Like, Bella is king, but Christopher Lee is like... Their films are the best vampire slash Dracula films. Like, the whole Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. Some are good with just Christopher Lee by himself, but when it's Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee together, they're really good, in my opinion. Even Satanic Rites I do like, even though it's not as good as the others. Um, it still has that that hammer feel, which works. Uh, the last film of the night was the movie of the day. It was actually chosen by myself on DVD Talk. And uh, it was uh, something I wanted to see. Um, I think they waited too long for it. That's the only problem. And that Zombieland double tap. Um, the first Zombieland I loved. I, you know, it was fun when it came out and everything. Uh, characters were all good in it. So this was something I wanted to check out. I do think they go a little overboard on like the characters of the people. Like, it's cool to have, like, different characters out in the zombie wasteland, but it's, like, they go, like, way too into it, and they just keep harping on, like, similar jokes or similar tropes of these characters. Um, the actual action stuff, like, the the ending, the whole uh, running of the bulls and everything, that that's really, really cool, because like, it's something kind of original. Woody Harrelson and uh, um, the guy from uh, Facebook, I can't think, uh, Jesse Eisenberg, are they play so good off together. And the scene with them as, like, they see their doubles or mirror images is very good. Um, that works out, too. It's, I, I go 6 out of 10. I, I don't think it's as good as the, uh, the original. And it, like I said, they waited too long. They should have been in film two, three years later. You know, I'll wait in 10 years after. It's way too much. But uh, Big Night, I got eight films in. A lot of garbage. A lot of first-time garbage watch. Um, some good films in there, though. Dracula AD is, is so awesome, I think. Uh, I don't think it's as good as, like, the original, like I said, like the um, House of Dracula and uh, Dracula, or The Curse of Dracula. Uh, but it's still a fun film. So, until tomorrow, catch you on the flip side.